Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Weiss, and we're going to walk through a whole variety of cases regarding the foot and ankle today. I'm going to show you various lumps and bumps around the ankle, whether they're ganglion cysts or actual hematomas. In many ways, the foot and ankle is ideal for ultrasound since structures are right under the skin. It could be a little difficult because they're all out of bony curves, which may make ultrasound a little difficult. However, for the most part, you can really see structures very clearly with ultrasound in the foot and ankle. Also, when intervening and draining a ganglion or a hematoma or injecting the joint, ultrasound is very useful because you can guide the needle and avoid any underlying structures. This is a case of a 42-year-old female. She presents with pain in the right foot for about four months, diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, went ahead and did a cortisone injection, which did help her for several weeks, but then she started noticing the pain start coming back. Also, ultrasound was useful diagnostically as I was able to see thickening and heterogeneity of the plantar fascia near the origin at the medial process of the calcaneal tuberosity and also in this region I was able to see a intrasubstance tear of the plantar fascia as well. 42 year old female here for recurring plantar fasciitis in her right foot. It initially started about two years ago and at that time it responded well to naproxen and stretching. However, over the past four months she has noticed persistent pain that has not been alleviated by naproxen and stretching. Here is a long axis view of her plantar fascia and you can see it inserting on the calcaneus and it is thickened and irregular at its insertion on the calcaneus. Also there's some dark linear type signal within it consistent with an intrasubstance tear. And here's the plantar fascia again, it's probably greater than 4 millimeters thick consistent with tendinosis. And there's an intrasubstance tear that you can see as well, right near its bony insertion. So we're going to try to get our needle between the plantar fascia and the calcaneus. One thing you want to make sure is you don't go too superficial. You don't want to put your needle here, then you'll wind up in the fat pad. So you really want to go deep. And basically have your needle kind of go right over the spot where she is tender. And here I am, I'm pushing on the skin, on the medial aspect of the foot and you can see the planes of the fat and the plantar fascia underneath that kind of roll over each other. This is a good way to delineate the plantar fascia from the fat pad. And your target is under the plantar fascia. You don't want to go superficial to it because you may get into the fat pad. How you doing? Good, just burning, but that's okay. It's supposed to be, right? Yeah. I'm like a sting? Again, here's our needle going underneath the plantar fascia between that and the flexor duturum brevis muscle slash calcaneus. So the advantage of this technique is that you can see the, at the needle on long axis. However, you can't really do any kind of fenestration of the plantar fascia because you're going against the fibers. Here we are, we're injecting cortisone. You can just see a little blush there come out of the needle underneath the plantar fascia. Okay, so we're three weeks into plantar fascia cortisone injection. Um, how's it doing overall? Okay, so the first, the first couple days, exactly like you said, a little sore, a little numb, a little right. tight, fine. Then after three days, great was in flats, taking it easy, no heels, no exercise, nothing, for about two weeks. Then I started with a little walking and exercise, and what kind of exercise? the last week it's already hurting again. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of exercise were you doing? Um, I do a little kickboxing and just walking. I walk to work back and forth, so that's like an hour. It's a half hour there and a half hour back, but walking, not feeling And you were doing that before the shower as well? Park. And I was doing that before, yeah. But I, mean, I only started after two weeks. You told me two yeah, weeks, no exercise. Two weeks, can I, I give really it? did. I was good. You were good. I was. And how was it now as compared to before the shot? It's still better. I'm not wincing when I get out of bed. I put my foot down, but I'm, I'm feeling it again. You like, it was good that first week out, and then, like, even the second week, I was like, oh, miracle. And yeah. now, the last week, I'm already starting to feel it when I go down and I'm like pushing in and I'm like oh crap it's there again. This is a case of a 35 year old male. He presented about six weeks after a work related injury. He uh, works at the airport and a metal tow bar weighing about 150 pounds fell on his left foot essentially right on the dorsum of the midfoot. He had a 
fairly sizable hematoma that I was able to evaluate in the office and we used ultrasound essentially to irrigate it with saline and try to drain whatever blood was within that hematoma. So this is an interesting case of a 35 year old male uh, presented basically as a workers comp related injury where a large metal piece of equipment fell on the top of his foot causing this fairly sizable hematoma. He came to me about five or six weeks into the injury. We did an ultrasound which showed essentially a hematoma right under the skin, right above the extensor tendons. Hard time extending the third and fifth toes. It's kind of sitting right on top of his extensor tendons. And he was having chronic pain with this hematoma. It was making it difficult for him to walk and basically just move his foot freely. Here we are in axial view. We're comparing it to his MRI. You can see the metatarsals, and you can see the extensor tendons essentially right underneath the hematoma. And again, this is where ultrasound is useful because we can avoid injuring these tendons during the aspiration slash irrigation. That's some of it. Alright, just throw a glass. Mm -hmm. So here we are, we're using a 16 and a half gauge needle, the biggest one we have. That's our best shot to try to get some of the fluid out, which mm -hmm. I anticipated to be quite thick. And here we are injecting just saline into it, trying to loosen it up with the needle and break it up and see whatever remaining blood we can get out of it. And you can see how close we are to the extensor tendons. Okay, and we went through this process a couple times, again, to try to get as much blood out as we can. And also, just the pressure of the water can perhaps break up any scarring within that area. We did some subsequent acupuncture therapy on him as well. How's it feel? You're about two I'm weeks better. after. I'm better than before. Yeah? So, yeah. Hurts less when you walk? Oh, I'm a lot less when I walk. I'm able to kind of move my toes more than I did before. Here we are at six weeks, and you can see that hematoma is starting to get a little lighter, uh, consistent with some solid tissue forming in there, but it's certainly smaller. Also, you can see how close you are to vascular structures right underneath it. And here's just a comparison, six weeks compared to pre-procedure, and certainly much smaller, and it is organizing. And here we are five months out, and again, it's shrunk even more, and uh, it still has some hyperechoic signal within it, but a lot better. And here's just the serial images of pre-procedure six weeks and five months. And we can see that the hematoma has drastically reduced in size. This is a case of a 66-year-old male. He complained of pain uh, in the left ankle, essentially immediately over the region of the tibialis posterior tendon. Initially, I thought it was something going on with the tibialis posterior tendon. We did an ultrasound, and to, to my surprise, he actually had a blood clot in the posterior tibial vein. This is one case where ultrasound was able to essentially immediately shift the way I treated this patient and steer him, I believe, in the correct direction. This is a patient, 66-year-old male, here, here for pain in the left distal leg, uh, in the medial region, about right over here, going on for, again, four days, no injury, no fever, chills. Physical exam, he's really just very tender in the vicinity of the tibialis posterior tendon. Uh, he status post-surgery when he was about 10 years old for a fracture here. Sounds like he may have had some pins put in at that time. <clears throat> he's not tender over the lateral malleolus. Really not much pain with the medium malleus, but as you go posterior, it's quite tender. It's pain with walking. I'm going to go ahead and do an ultrasound, focusing on the medial aspect of the ankle. Okay, so we're going to start off in an axial view, kind of in the mid part of the leg here. One of the uh, veins in the superficial tissue there, we can just see compressing nicely. And so we're going to just work our way towards this painful spot. Put a color Doppler on here. We're going to. So here we are. We have one of the arteries in the um, superficial um, part of the medial distal leg is pumping nicely. But next to it, I see no flow. I can see some kind of hyperechoic type substance within 
that vessel right next to the artery. And again, there's no flow in it. This is where it's tender. And you can see that there is what appears to be clot within the uh, posterior tibial vein. And here it is pretty clear that you can see that hyperechoic material within the vein itself. Actually, at each branch of the posterior tibial vein, you can see clot. It's consistent with a superficial thrombophlebitis type of picture here. Body. Belly. Okay, so he's really just tenderness, and this is consistent with his history. Really, just out of nowhere, he had pain here. Now let's just focus on his tibialis posterior tendon. We're just looking at the uh, tibialis posterior tendon again, flexor digitorum longus. And the tendons look normal. Uh, the tibialis posterior tendon has a little bit of fluid around it, which is normal just beyond the medial malleolus. So I'm gonna turn on that vein. We want to go from basically a short axis view of vein to a long axis view. Here's his artery, and that seems to be functioning pretty good. Here's his vein. You can see it appears to have basically hypo or hyperechoic material in it. This is a case of a 51 year old female complaining of pain in the left ankle under the medial malleolus. I was concerned initially that she may have tibialis posterior tendinosis. Ultrasound, however, did show an accessory navicular that looked irregular, uh, which was consistent with irritation. Also, the tibialis posterior tendon also was tendinotic as well. We did a subsequent x-ray, which confirmed that she did have an accessory navicular. 51-year-old female, here for pain in the left foot. Seems like around the tibialis posterior tendon, just under the medial malleolus, going on for three weeks. Kind of happened fairly suddenly, and she gets this intermittent type sharp pain, it seems like, in that region. Physical exam really just shows tenderness again in the tibialis posterior tendon just below the medial malleolus. There's not much bony tenderness around the medial lateral malleolus itself. Let me go around and just follow that tendon. There's our flexor digitorum longus. Nice view. Maybe a little split in flexor digitorum longus. Here you can see a fine little split almost going right through the midpoint of the tendon. You got the uh, medial malleolus on the right of the screen, and you got the calcaneus on the left side of the screen. You can see the Tibial calcaneo, part of the deltoid ligament, looks fairly well preserved. Tibialis posterior looks okay. And here you can see that part of the deltoid ligament, a uh, pretty linear structure right under the tibialis posterior tendon. There's a fair amount of fluid and it actually looks like <clears throat> some fragmentation around that tibialis posterior tendon. So here it's hard to say whether those are actually fragments of the tendon itself or just some synovitis fluid around the tibialis posterior tendon right before it hits the accessory navicular. And here's a very irregular accessory navicular. And again, we're looking at the tibialis posterior tendon in long access. And you can see some debris around it. She probably has some tenosynovitis of that tendon. Again, you can see some fluid with probably tenosynovitis around the tendon. Here it is leading into an accessory navicular. And she may have just irritated that whole region. And here again you can see that tendon leading into an irregular accessory navicular. Here's the case of a 12 year old boy essentially just twisted his ankle and was still having some residual pain a month later. He was concerned that there may be a bone that was dislocated as there was a bump on the uh, dorsal lateral aspect of his foot. On physical exam, I was suspicious for a ganglion. Here, ultrasound was essentially able to reassure myself and the patient that it was nothing more than a simple ganglion cyst. There was no bony dislocation. We also had x-rays, which did not show that as well. 12-year-old boy twisted his foot about one month ago. Painful right over the cue boy. He does have a little bit of a bump over there. Um, we did an x-ray, which didn't show much. It feels like it may have a little ganglion. We can go ahead and do an ultrasound. So basically just put the probe right over the bump and we'll see what it finds. Kind of reassuring. He was concerned that it may be a bone sticking out, so here's a case where ultrasound where, uh, can kind of... Uh, a little bit tender there? I'll tell you this. A little bit tender. Please don't be it. It's got a little ganglion cyst right above the bone. This is cool. Right. Say it's Actually, uh, boys on the right side, fourth metatarsal is on the left. And here you can easily see a ganglion basically right over the cuboid uh, between that and the fourth metatarsal. Just basically doing a um, sagittal view here.
Do a little axial view. On the left side of the screen is lateral, and right side is medial. And we're starting medial here. I believe we're at the medial cuneiform, and then we're going to the intermediate cuneiform, and then the lateral cuneiform. So here, when we lay out the cuneiforms, we actually see that the cyst is also on top of the lateral cuneiform as well. And here I singled out some of the extensor tendons. Uh, you can see them going across the whole foot. So it looks like that cyst is really between the lateral cuneiform. Again, here you can see between the lateral cuneiform and the cuboid. And as you go distal, you can see how it is also near the base of the fourth metatarsal. And uh, fourth metatarsal base. We're starting axial, and now we're going to turn. So sagittal, right side of the screen is proximal. And here in our sagittal view, you can see how the ganglion also is on top of the lateral cuneiform as well. And here it is over the cuboid.